a stroke survivor and a bind member. And I'm Kezia, a brain injury survivor and a bind member as well. And welcome everyone to our episode, which is what is an occupational therapist? Uh, we have welcomed a wonderful woman, a mother, and a occupational therapist with a doctoral degree in it, Chrissy. So welcome Chrissy and Thank we're you. so excited to be here. Me too. Welcome to Bindways, the official podcast of the Brain Injury Network of Dallas. I'm Brian White, Bind's Executive Director. On each episode, we'll be providing insight into the brain injury community. We'll be talking to members and professionals regarding their stories and the important role of Bind's Clubhouse. We work as a team to inspire hope, community, and a sense of purpose to survivors, caregivers, and the public. Thank you for tuning in to Bindways. Let's get on with the show. So just to go in a little bit, um, would you tell us a little bit about yourself and your story as your career? Sure. Um, my name is Chrissy. I was born in Dallas. I um, have two dogs, a chihuahua and a boxer, and a two-year-old son who was born on the 4th of July in 2020. So that's fun. Um, I have been an occupational therapist for about 13 years. I went to Texas Women's University and I've worked with uh, brain injury survivors and their caregivers my whole career. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. So what made you decide to go into occupational therapy? Well, um, I don't necessarily have an interesting personal story that led me into <laughs> that field, um, but when I was getting my bachelor's in child development, a lot of my um, classmates were going into occupational therapy to get their masters. And so I just learned from my friends um, about what that was. I looked it up and I, the more I learned, the more I gravitated to it. Um, I've always been into people and um, helping people. When I was a little kid, I would tell my mom I wanted to be a pediatrician. When I was a teenager, I wanted to be a child psychologist. Oh, wow. So I didn't know about occupational therapy, but I think my mind and heart was always um, gonna lead me somewhere to be helping people. So that's how I found out about it. I think that's like really cool to hear because I had no idea what an occupational therapist was or its existence until I had a stroke mm -hmm. and until I was being told to fold a laundry. Like I was <laughs> like, why? I don't get it, you know? So I really, I think it's really interesting to be able to hear that, how you learned about it and yeah. how you started it. But um, can you help us like understand like what is the difference? Cause like me, like I didn't know what an occupational therapist was. Yeah. And mostly people know about physical therapy. Right. So like what is like the difference and like well, how does that go into recovery for brain injury survivors? Right, right. I guess it's hard for people to necessarily put OTs in, in a box because we do so many things mm -hmm. for so many different people depending on what they have hap had happened to them. You know, we do work with kids and adults and older people, and we do work with brain injury survivors and um, people that have all sorts of medical issues happen with them. And depending on uh, your timeline of recovery, we do all sorts of different things with you. <laughs> In the hospital, OTs work on certain things that they don't work on when we're working with you later on in recovery. We're at your home and community or an outpatient center. So it's just so varied. So yes. it's hard to, to give um, a pinpointed answer because it's so diverse. But um, what an occupational therapist does is really work with the physical therapist and the speech therapist. It's usually like a, um, a group of, you know, three mm -hmm. disciplines like that. And we, we work with the team, with the, with the um, client and their family to get to know what their life is like, their individual situation. Every brain injury is different. Mm -hmm. Every person's life is different. Um, every person's personality is different. So we get to know the person and what their goals are, what their individual circumstances are, and we try to help them through the recovery process as, as much as we can. Yeah, and, and that I, can be anything. I mean, we can work on the physical aspect of things like PTs do. We can work on balance and arm strength and, uh, you know, endurance training. And we can work on things that speeches work on, like communication and talking and handwriting and all things like that. Right, y'all all kind of work together yeah, on that. So, that's... you know, we're kind of the catch-all. We, we all work together, and, um, and, and OT can do a lot of everything, really. Right. And I know, I mean, I was blessed with, I loved my OT, mm -hmm. um, my OT person. And she, it's another one of those acronyms that people find hard or get confused when they're talking about 
occupational therapy is ADL, adaptive daily living. I think you noticed as we walked in that my left arm doesn't really function very well. She gave me the courage, the knowledge of, to learn how to live with just one arm. I mean, that's amazing that y'all can do that. I mean, what other kind of different adaptive tools are there out there that help with the regular getting back just daily living? Yeah, one of the one of the coolest things to do is um, get back someone to be able to cook, you know, and especially when you have um, an affected side or an arm or hand that isn't working like it used to, um, it's really hard to do life that you used to do with two hands. So, you know, folding clothes or cutting vegetables, um, getting a boiling pot off the stove, things like that. Mm -hmm. So I like kitchen adaptive equipment a lot, you know, cutting boards where you can um, use one hand or rocker knives that you can cut things with instead of having two hands. Um, I think those are really, really useful. Yeah. I also really love, one of the things I really, an adaptive kind of tool I really love is um, all the technology that's out there on our smartphones. Mm -hmm. One of my absolute favorite things is the voice activated Siri for texting and also the reminder app on your phone. I use that a lot. And I think it's, I teach everybody with an iPhone um, to use that voice activated reminders because it's so easy to just tell your phone something to remind you of later mm -hmm. and be notified of it. It helps you remember and follow through with the productive tasks that you, you know, need to do. And I just think it's awesome. Yeah. I think right now that you're talking about it, like these apps that anyone really can use. And I feel like almost everyone, regardless of an injury, like you use the reminders, you right. use these things. So I feel like hearing that from someone that's a therapist, I think would, at least for me, like it made me like motivate that I'm going to be okay and I have a future, regardless of what happened to me and my issues are. Um, so how do you talk to people that are really having to change their life, like before having a brain injury and then after... And like you said, you work with speech therapists and physical therapists. So it's like a very wide, like a broad, like change right. that they're going to have. So yeah. how do you motivate them and how, what do you use to motivate and encourage? Well, I think that you have to be realistic and be a real person and get to know someone and listen. Listening, the skill of listening is super important. Um, you think that, oh, I'm an OT, I have a lot to say to you, but what it needs to start with is you telling me stuff mm -hmm. and me listening to you so that I can understand who you are, what your personal motivations are, where you're at, maybe in the grief process slash recovery process, so that yeah. I can offer that type of um, encouragement or support or education, you know, yeah. for just meeting that person where they're at in their recovery um, and understanding who they are so that whatever comes out of my mouth may hopefully be meaningful to them. If I just go in and tell them whatever I know and just, it's, you know, about me to you, then I, you might, I mean, you, no one would listen to that. You want to know right. that the person who's giving you information cares and is giving you personal information, not just stuff they read offline or in the textbooks <laughs> or, you know, right. I don't know. I think it's more meaningful when you do have that connection. And I think it starts with listening to the survivor about who they are and making a connection first. Yeah, and I think I right now that you were talking about that, I think I totally connected to it because like when I said earlier when I was like I wake up and I have to fold laundry, like I was in a hospital. It was like a total different environment. But once I got here to Texas and I had my occupational therapist, I was like totally able to walk. I was totally able to talk. I was able to do these things so once I got to know my occupational therapist I started doing presentations which is what my normal day before a stroke was like I talked to people you know but I still had to work on my um like confidence and stuff like that mm -hmm. so it was really cool to like learn about occupational therapists and that's what you guys do and I think that's awesome you yeah. know everyone's present everyone's recovery is different right so i think that's super cool that you guys yeah. do that i love that you said confidence because i yeah. also think that's a super important aspect of things so if i can um little by little help people be more confident i think that that by giving you know it's easy to feel not confident and i hear a lot of expressions of people that aren't confident and p concerns and worries and you know some of that negative stuff and so i like turning that around and giving the feedback to them like 
hey, there's yeah. hope. You know, look, these are the things that I see that y- you potential, like you can do this and make them yeah. confident because if you, the more confident you are, it's going to trickle down into other areas right. and it's going to be long lasting, you know? So yeah. I think confidence is really important to try to redevelop or maintain within yourself because, you know, it doesn't matter what happens, but when you're confident, you make better decisions and stronger decisions for yourself. And, you know, we'll see what happens after that. But right. coming from a place of confidence is obviously way, you know, better than coming from a place of you're not feeling so good about yourself. Despite whatever happens after that, confidence is is a really helpful um, sense of self to have. Yeah, for sure. And right now, I'm sorry, I'm like overtaking a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but right now that you were saying that, like, do you have like an amazing like um, accomplishment or something that's very memorable to you in your career that you've been really focused on, um, like through recovery of a, a survivor? Like, do you have a memorable um, accomplishment? I have a lot of, you know, special people that I've worked with, um, survivors and their families that, you know, um, are years and years ago, you know, that I'll never forget their names or even recent ones, you know. Um, and when I have to say goodbye, tear up, you know, there's always special people that you work with. Um, I I do love getting people back to work. I love that process. Um, it's, it's, a, it's just a lot of ownership back to the patient of their life. And I know that getting back to work is kind of one of those things that not everybody has the ability to do. But when you get to see it, it's so rewarding because you know the implications that it has for the rest of their lives. You know, financial sense sense of self, just, I mean, it's just so rewarding to be able to see that. And I I really know, um, like the back of my hand, the, the way to help someone return to work if they're in fact able to. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's kind of missed. People don't know. You know, you have a tr- an injury like this and it takes you out of work for months. Like, who do you talk to? How do you do? How do you get your family to back away so that you right. can take over the communication with your employer? And how do you not get too excited and, talk? you know, call them too early in your recovery? You know, it's like, what are the step-by-step processes to to you know successfully get back to work i love teaching people that um and it's also familiar for them because it's their career it's their job so i think that you know most people that i work with are in that prime of their life they're in their 30s 40s 50s 60s and they're still working and that's such a huge sense of self-identity is what you do for a living even if you're a homemaker even if you don't have a a, you know nine to five job like that or, or whatever um So those things are really rewarding for me. But I remember people's personalities and connections and things that I learned from people. I've learned how to, uh, recently I learned how to fry an eggplant. I'd never (laughs) done that before. A patient taught me how to do that. And um, yeah, I learned a lot of things from my patients. Later on today, I'm going to learn how to make a candle. I've never done that before. I'm going going to do stuff. So I learn a lot from my patients. And I mean, it's so fun. Like occupational therapy is helping people live their daily life and I, it's it very I mean, interesting. It's occupational therapy, too. I'm trying to remember. I think my occupational therapy also helped me getting back to driving. Right. Because that's Absolutely. another big one. We oh, talk about is. independence and confidence. Wow. Getting back to driving is like, please, tom- I want to drive tomorrow. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, Absolutely. it doesn't work that way. But Yeah. I was fortunate enough to work at a place where we had a return to driving program, and I did love being an advocate for my patients in like let's have this person get behind the wheel and try it you know Mm -hmm. i'm not the type of therapist to say well this piece of paper told me that they might have difficulty doing it you know i'm like well let's push the boundaries and let's get this person behind the wheel it's a safe environment it's a car with brakes on the passenger side you know all the safety things are there let's push the boundaries you can't go through life acting to safe you know um you have to push the boundaries especially in recovery to make big changes and to, um, to help people see, you know, if, if they can drive or not. And then a lot of the times, you know, they can, and that's really rewarding to be a part of someone being able to take over that role again. Yeah. And I know, and fortunately there's all kinds of things out there now to help right. people that need help driving. Right. Um, yeah. I still have issues sometimes with the blinkers and it's on that side of the steering wheel, yeah. not on my left side, you yeah. know, it's on the left side. So it's a little difficult, but right. I make it work. You're doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I think earlier today you were talking about devices and things. Like, is there some certain ones that you think that need to be known more about or 
Um, well, I, I would say it's, there's a lot of things out there. It's just specific to the person, you know, yeah. um, there's portable ramps that help people get in and out of their, um, like if they live in an apartment, you know, and they have a little step, um, there's, um, different things in the bathroom, you know, long handled, um, shower heads are helpful and removable shower mm-hmm. heads. Those are helpful. Um, of course, all the equipment that I think you would get education about in the hospital the basics the tub transfer bench and all that kind of stuff yeah, but right. um i think that the cooking equipment is is helpful in life um voice activated things you know what's really popular these days is the um google home and the alexa they you mm-hmm. know at your yes. home so you can get smart plugs you can put a smart plug in a regular plug in the wall and then you can plug a lamp into it and then you can operate that lamp with an app on your phone yeah i mean and then like, I've from that, that you can expand to operating the blinds in your home, the other lights, sure. you know, there's just so many things that are automated these days through technology um, that aren't that expensive, you know, to get yeah. um, even video monitoring systems. We have, a, I have a patient right now who um, sometimes he forgets to make lunch and he's diabetic and he goes all day without oh, eating no. lunch oh. while his wife's at work. Well, you know, we've tried to work with him on that, but what's needed is a tool of a video camera so that his wife can see if he's had lunch. Cause sometimes he doesn't answer his cell phone. So she gets right. really worried. So it's like, what's that, te- what's the technology that's out there? What's the specific situation that needs, you know, help and let's pair those together. And sometimes you think it's, you know, costly or difficult to set up, but Really, it's not. And if you have a professional that can kind of explore that with you, um, you can probably find a good solution with the technology that's out there. Yeah, these that's days. awesome because, like, I wouldn't have never think about the, that. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. mentioned my favorite. I love the rocker knife. Right. I have two at home. And yeah. I use them for everything. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. You take for granted the things that you, right. you know, little things pop up you can't do, and you're like, wow, it makes a big difference in your daily life, right? It does. You eat every day. You cook every day. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's also awesome to hear about it. I'm sure a lot of the subscribers that probably don't have this experience with maybe family member or someone having a a, um, a brain injury, um, because I feel like it's very weird to hear like, oh, I need to relearn how to do my makeup, or like that's weird. That's not really therapy, but it is. It really, oh, yeah, and it's your daily yeah, life. everything. Yeah, hair. You know? Yeah, all, all of these things, things yeah. little things in life. Um, so I think it's right. super cool to be hearing about it and. On a perspective as a professional saying it, like, this is my job. Like, this is what I learn on a day-to-day basis. Like, help you learn. But at the same time, you're learning from your own patients, too. So I think that's super cool. Yeah. Um, We also wanted to know a little bit. So you're welcome here to Bind Waves to be a guest. Yes. Um, But what is your experience with Bind? Um, And, like, how did you know about Bind or... Well, I've known about Bind for many years now. Um, I, like you said, I work in the area at a um, facility that offers day neuro rehabilitation for people who've had a stroke or brain injury or other neurological events. Um, And I've worked there my whole career. So um, Bind is definitely promoting itself out there in the community. And um, I've known about it for, for years. So we've referred many patients to Bind um, and to their caregivers. Um, so I know that you guys have the fundraisers every year and mm-hmm. I, I just knew what the club, I don't know, I've just always known about it <laughs> for so for so long um, that it's member run. I love that part, you know. I know it's it might be a little bit difficult for um, people to make, it's not a therapy center, you know. Right. You, you guys run it. I mean, is it therapeutic? Of course, you know, you, right. you're, you're giving your therapy it's therapy yourself, by doing. But, yeah, yeah, but it's, it saying. takes a leap. I guess, you know, people don't know what a clubhouse is, but it's it's interesting to, to learn about that. And um, I do think you, it's so awesome to hear that you guys have a place in Fort Worth too. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah we're excited. And yeah. it is amazing how I've noticed over time, just being stroke survivor, how all the therapies know each other. All the therapists know each other. <laughs> all the world. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yep. It's amazing. that. But yep. Chrissy, we really appreciate you taking your time to be here with us today and kind of giving us the professional outlook of what an occupational therapist does and is. We know and we appreciate you and our therapies, therapists are our lifelines. They have saved us for real. Mm, yeah. So we appreciate you so much, not just being an occupational therapist, but taking your time out today. And we encourage everyone to continue listening to Bind Waves. Hit that like button. <laughs> Go ahead and subscribe and share. Yes. yes, and I also want to give you a huge thanks uh, for coming to be with us, and also just for to be educating everyone and like what 
how therapy continues to contribute to our recovery, our ongoing and never ending recovery. Right. So right. thank you so much for that. You're very welcome. Saying thank you so much. And honestly, we want to like promote and ask all subscribers to tell us what do you want to learn about? What do you want to think about? What do you want to hear? Who do you want to be invited next? And let us know. <laughs> Thanks so Thank much. You. You're welcome. Thank you very much. We hope you've enjoyed listening to Bind Waves and continue to support Bind and our nonprofit mission. We support brain injury survivors as they reconnect into the life, the community, and their workplace. And we couldn't do that without great listeners like you. We appreciate each and every one of you. Continue watching. Until next time. Until next time.